So when it comes to the question of the reality of God, a lot of people take the Icarus approach. If you remember the story of the fable of Icarus where he and his dad made uh, wings in order to escape from the labyrinth and they used wax to attach the wings and so his dad told him that when you uh, escape and fly away, don't fly so high up in the sky that you draw near to the sun and the heat melts the wax and you fall and don't fly too close to the earth or moisture will collect from the ocean and you'll fall that way as well. So I need to, you need to fly a middle path. A lot of people take this approach. They think, you know, I, I don't want to think, like become obsessive about the idea of God and think too much about God because those kind of people are boring or do horrible things. But I also don't want to be the dregs of society. I don't want to be violent and hateful. I don't want to be Hitler. And so I'm, I just want to play sort of the middle ground. Uh, strangely enough, both atheists and theists agree uh, that that is the wrong way to approach the question about the reality of God. And the reason for this is because every single person, regardless of their background, uh, has some type of framework into which they place all the features of their experience in order to make meaningful sense of the whole thing. We, we call this a world, fi world picture, a world view. And whether God is a part of that world picture or not has massive implications. D Wallace's parable about the two fish reminds us about this and how difficult it can be uh, for, say, the young fish, you know, to see that they're living in this water. They have water that's around them, but they just have a hard time seeing it. And everybody has a hard time seeing the particular worldview that they uh, accept or assume in their daily life. Now, in the case of God, the vast majority of people through history have actually seen that God is real and is indeed a part of their world picture. But a growing uh, minority, it's a significant and growing minority of people, uh, now don't see that God is real. And uh, this demands some kind of explanation because uh, one of these groups, fairly large groups, is blind to the truth, the ultimate truth that the other group sees. Now, a lot of factors play into, uh, into clouding our ability to see important truths. Implicit bias is something that the psychologists refer to. And the ancient Greek philosopher Xenophanes described implicit bias very colorfully by saying, if the cows could worship gods, they would depict the gods as cows as a result of what we now describe as implicit bias. There's also uh, the, the, the uh, everyday living, the, the kind of mundane, crushing boredom of everyday living, which Wallace talks about actually in, the, in, in the, the commencement speech that he delivered, which acts like a kind of dense fog over our lives and, and seems to prevent us or obscure actually the ultimate truth, uh, the attempt to try and see ultimate truth. Now, Plato describes uh, this problem uh, maybe the first to describe this, this problem so colorfully when he describes the allegory of the cave where these people are bound in a dark cave and um, there are shadows cast on the wall of objects that the people are not able to turn around and see. They never get to see the real objects until one of them is, uh, breaks free and starts heading out of the caves uh, cave sees the objects and then heads out into the sunlight and sees the objects in their full illumination. So when he comes back into the cave and tries to explain ultimate reality, what things really are in truth to these people in the cave, they're uncomfortable with it, they don't believe him, and are even hostile toward him. So the takeaway from this video is not, hey, I see that God is, is, is real and, and everybody is biased who doesn't. The point is to say that for any of us who are inquiring about whether God is real and why we think God is real or not real, that we have to take, we have to heed the advice of the ancient philosophers who said, know yourself. Um, we have to probe our own motives and our biases and our limitations in the search for a truth as important and as, as having such massive implications as the reality of God. And it doesn't matter where you're coming from. All of us have to keep sort of one eye on God, the object of our, of our search, whether he's real or not, and one eye on ourselves and what's shaping why we're reacting to what we discover 
uh, about God or the absence of God or the evidence anyway as we analyze what people offer as evidence for God. Mm-hmm.